We are continuing to do some movie reviews for you, and we're going to do a little documentary for you. We've got Jake on the show. Jake and I like to uh, do documentaries every now and then. Sometimes we do a lot of music stuff. This time, we're going into the world of Star Wars, because we both love Star Wars. Too much. (laughs) Too much. We talk about it in the (laughs) office all the time. We come up with our theories and and, uh, you know, just speculate like normal Star Wars nerds do. But uh, this one, we've got a a documentary we're going to review. It's called I Am Your Father, which, of course, is the classic line from Empire Strikes Back where Darth Vader says that to Luke Skywalker. He's like, yo, Luke, I'm your father. Spoiler alert, in case you didn't know that. Um, (laughs) But this documentary focuses on not the voice of Darth Vader, but the guy who actually plays Darth Vader, the guy who puts on the costume, who puts on the mask. We're talking about David Prowse, and we get into a lot of his history uh, before Star Wars, after Star Wars, and some of his struggles. So, all in all, I am your father. What would you think, being a Star Wars fan? Uh, I actually really enjoyed it. Um, I was a little skeptical. I'd seen it on Netflix for a while, and Mm -hmm. I'm just like, well, you know, it's another unauthorized kind of Star Wars fan documentary. But, uh, no, I, I, I quite liked it. Um, there were a few things on there that seemed like it might have been reaching a little bit as mm-hmm. far as, you know. Uh, what they were trying to imply or what they were get trying, to? Yeah, what they were trying to imply. And, um, but, uh, but, I mean, they did have producers of the original film on. They had uh, Gary Kurtz and yeah. uh, Robert Watts. Is that what I name? think so. I don't know. We could look real but quick. You, you yeah. go ahead and look. But that, that Kurtz guy, Kurtz was one of the big driving forces, not only with... Uh, uh, with A New Hope, but also Empire Strikes Back. He produced uh, The Dark Crystal. I also believe he produced American Graffiti for uh, George Lucas as well. And uh, a lot of people, a lot of the true hardcore Star Wars fans kind of believe once Kurtz left uh, before Return of the Jedi, that kind of yeah, and, and submitted Kurtz, a different path for Star Wars. And 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 Kurtz had kind of said that I, at this point I was kind of done with Star Wars. It's like I'd done that. Now I wanted to move on with Dark Crystal. I don't think that was it. I think George and him had some, yeah, <laughs> some but differences. I mean, you you got to say Gary Kurtz is like he is pretty much he's one of those very key people. You know, of course it's George Lucas's character story. You sure. know, he was the driving force. He had the vision. Gary Kurtz saw that vision and and helped bring it to fruition because you know 20th Century Fox, of course, uh, they just you know sci-fi movies weren't big, especially you know sci-fi like you. you at the time, like in the mid '70s, you had movies like Death Race. You had that's what was your sci-fi movies, 2001, and things like that. They weren't real Planet successful. Of the Apes. Yeah, they they weren't very successful movies. Uh, they were moderately successful movies. Uh, we look back at them now, like, oh, those were great movies. Sure. But they usually had a very dystopian, dark kind of look at the future, and it was typically had to do with Earth or the human race. And and Star Wars was this fantasy film that just something that wasn't happening at yeah. that point in time. And when it did happen. One of the big pieces that made that successful was Darth Vader, was the villain. And in the first one, he only had like 16 minutes of total screen time, but he yeah. had an unperf- unforgettable performance, and David Prowse had a lot to do with that. He did. Um, you know, of course, his voice wasn't lent to the role, but he was the stand in. He was the one that the other actors played off mm-hmm. of. And of course, he just had the imposing physique that just made the character who he was, who made that, given that imposing look. Sure. You know, and, and you, you forget about that because you hear the voice of James Earl Jones and you kind of know the character, of, especially nowadays with all the other Star Wars movies. Yeah. You know, you know a lot more b- about the character of Darth Vader or Anakin Skywalker. But you, you think about it you now, if you think back to that original trilogy and, and you maybe look at some of the more modern versions of Darth Vader and be like, no, David Prowse was, was the one that made you fear Vader. Sure. Because it's just the way his, his body language, the way he, uh, the way he could just look so... Just, just by standing still, it just looked like I don't want to mess with this dude. Yeah, <laughs> and he had a, a before Star Wars, he had a pretty inter- interesting career. He uh, was a bodybuilder. He kind of had like a Arnold Schwarzenegger type of career early on. You know, did those kind of competitions and uh, bodybuilding competitions and whatnot. And then he got into uh, some of those early horror films that uh, a lot of the uh, um, uh, people in the United Kingdom started producing. They were doing uh, a lot of remakes of uh, uh, Frankenstein and Werewolf and stuff. I love those classic monster movies. And he, in those movies, had a mask on, you know? He did. Uh, he did, a, I think, a couple different versions of, of Frankenstein. And one of them, I think, he had minimal makeup on. So you, you actually kind of saw his face, but, you know, for the most part... Yeah, he was. He's pretty much always had a mask on or, or makeup or something to where you couldn't really, you know, tell who he was. Sure. 
but uh, just his Im- mm-hmm. impending figure, and and you know he was he was an actor without having to you know use words or you know use for his speech or anything like that. He was yeah. just a very he was very good at looking imposing, but he was yeah. also, you know, you watch the interviews with him and he just seems like the friendliest guy I ever met. Yeah, true. Um, not only uh, is this film about David Prowse and, you know, his work in Star Wars and, and his other films, but this documentary also has kind of an ulterior motive behind it. The director of this film uh, is a huge Star Wars fan, a huge fan of David Prowse, and he feels that David kind of got... Uh, screwed over a little bit in the movie Return of the Jedi because at the very end of that film Darth Vader's helmet comes off you see somebody and that somebody is not David Prowse no they they've got a more professional actor more uh I guess seasoned actor I'm trying to remember his name Sebastian Shaw Shaw, Sebastian Shaw exactly and um so for that that one quick little bit little scene and and I guess that they were shooting that without David Prowse being aware. Right, they didn't tell. Him. Uh, they didn't tell him, and I guess I don't know. I guess he had been called for a phone interview, and I guess the interviewer actually mentioned that to him, and he went and looked at the call sheet as they were shooting it, and of course. He wasn't uh, on there. And, of course, uh, Robert Watts said, you know, we put security at every door because we didn't tell <laughs> David Prowse that we were shooting it without him. And you, you'd, you'd have to have some pretty big security guards because, I mean, he was a world-class weightlifter. <laughs> yes. He was, you know, won strongman competitions and, and, and bodybuilder competitions. Uh, good friends with Lou Ferrigno, who is Incredible Hulk, who makes appearances yeah, in Yeah, he's movie. got friends, too. Yeah. <laughs> he's got big friends, too. And speaking of, I mean, you think about it. You think about interviews with, like, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Lou Ferrigno and David Prowse. Of course, these big bodybuilder guys. They're just, like, the nicest guys you could ever meet. Yeah. It must just be the, the European thing. I don't know. Sure. But they all just seem like very cheery, happy guys. Speaking of being, you know, approachable with David Prowse, is he also, this touches on how he was for, about, like, 16 years, was a mascot for for uh, road safety for kids. Yeah. For uh, the the green cross the green cross code man. Yeah, and he got honored by the queen for his work in that, which was very very cool. Um so I'm curious, uh, I'm kind of giving a spoiler away, so I apologize for doing that, uh but uh they recreated that scene in Jedi uh with the uh, director and all his producers and and David Prowse. They can't show it because it's, you know, copyright and stuff like that, but would you want to see that if you had the chance to see it oh i would like to see it um uh, and you know and, and they, they even say when they show it to an audience of course they don't show the actual scene but that this will probably be the only time anybody ever sees it yeah and it's probably just locked up in a hard drive somewhere but uh i think it'd be interesting to see um you know if you swapped it into return of the jedi would it help or hurt the movie it's such a short scene i don't I really don't think the the actor portrayal would have made a difference, but yeah. Uh, but I do think David Prowse now in that scene versus David Prowse back in eighty two, eighty three, yeah. when he was much younger, and you know, and he even said himself, "Oh, I couldn't have done that. I'm too handsome." You know, <laughs> so <laughs> even with makeup, I would have just been too handsome. But 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 you know, but now you know, being older, and I think he's got a little bit of a lazy eye, and yeah. I, I think he, you know, eighty years old, eighty one years old, or something like that, sure. eighty two by now, but. Uh, you know, I don't know. It would have been interesting, and I think it would have been a great send-off for him. I think they played it too safe by using season actor uh, Sebastian Shaw in that. So, let me ask you. You're a Star Wars fan. Do you need to watch this documentary? Uh, I think it's a movie for Star Wars fans, for sure. Okay. Um, watch it and, and learn more about the, the, you know, the actor who made Darth Vader such an imposing force. Through through the body language, through the fight scenes, and just just by putting on the costume and standing there, you know, yeah, you could just definitely tell that, and that's why you know if you've seen Rogue One or you've seen the portrayal of Darth Vader in in Episode Three of the prequels, it just it doesn't quite look it's right. Not you know? It's not the same. It's not the same. It's not the same at all. The documentary is called "I Am Your Father." You can find it on Netflix, or you can buy it wherever it is you get your digital movies. Uh, coming up next, we've got a review of the remake of Death Wish. Starring, uh, what's his face, Uh, Bruce Willis. Yes, it's coming your way next on the screen team.